Hello and welcome to a very quick tutorial on how to find chunks in Minecraft Bedrock Edition using just redstone and this works in survival without cheats enabled so you can find where your chunk boundaries are. We're doing this in a creative world quickly now just to show we can demonstrate and then we'll go into a survival world later and we'll show this thing working. So there's a lot of reason why you want to find where your chunk boundaries are in this world but we'll go into that a little bit later. For now, you're going to need one lever, two redstone dusts, two redstone repeaters, one block of any type, and a redstone lamp. Now, you can use a redstone torch instead of a redstone lamp, but it's very difficult to see, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So what we're going to do is build, make a basic redstone clock by adding a repeater there, a repeater there facing the other way, both on maximum ticks, a piece of redstone dust there, a piece of redstone dust there, our redstone lamp there, and a block there of any type. And all this is is a very, very basic redstone clock with a big flashing light on the end so we can see it from a distance. Then you can put your lever down, give it a quick flick like that, and that will continue to cycle round and that light will flash. Now, because of the way Minecraft Bedrock Edition works, as soon as we are four chunks away from this, that light will either stay on or it will stay off because the redstone will stop working. So if we just go away from that until the light stops, we know we're four chunks away. Now, I appreciate that you guys probably can't see this if you're looking at this on a small device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my field of view right down so that we can see a little bit closer when we're further away. But it does make it feel like we're just going very, very slowly in the world. But can you see that lamps now stop flashing? So if I just creep forward slightly little bit further forward and wait till that goes back on again there we go so that started flashing there if i take one step back into the next block back that will stop again so this block here i'm going to turn my field of view back down again because that's too much so you can see there the redstone lamp has stopped flashing i'm on this block here if i move to that block let's just put a couple of blocks either side of it then it will come on again so we know that this means that we are within four chunks of it so this here this line is a chunk boundary. So why don't we get some stairs like so? Let's use quartz. And if we put a stair facing, no, a stair facing that way and a stair facing that way, that gives us a line right in the center of the two chunks. So this is one chunk and this is one chunk. So we know that there are four chunks in between here and there. So a chunk consists of 16 blocks. So if we count, including the one we're on, 16 blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This should be another one. So we can put a stair there and we can put a stair there. And that means that this is the beginning of the next one. And I'm going to count until we get back to the center. One, two, three, four. So we've now got four chunks along that way divided by these stairs. So this one should be within this chunk. So if we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There we go. So we were right on the end of that chunk boundary there with that. that. There are four chunks. If I fly up a bit, you've got one chunk there, two, three, four, and then the fifth one. So now what you've got to do is do it in the other direction. So we're just going to walk backwards until it stops flashing in this direction. So there we go. It stopped flashing already, and we'll just creep back until it turns back on again. There we go. It's turned on on this block here. So if I move back to that block there, it should be off. Yep. So this is the first chunk that way. So we'll put a stair like that. And that is the last chunk that way. And then we can do the same again. We can count back until we get there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we were right near the edge. So now we know where our chunk borders are. We can go round with our stairs like so and work out exactly where all of the edges are. So if we just run these along like this, come round that corner that way and we can link up and we can make big squares exactly where our chunks are. So there we go. We've managed to line out four chunks just using this method and we can ca carry on that going by counting 16 blocks in either direction and make this as big as we want. So why is this useful? Why do we need to know where our chunks are? Well, there are a number of reasons. First of all, if you're building redstone contraptions, it's a good idea to try and keep them within one chunk or within a number of chunks and try and avoid them going over chunk boundaries so that if you've got, let's say, a minecart running from one chunk boundary to the next and you just happen to go out of the distance where... Let's say we're over here and a minecart goes off into another one. It might unload, you know, there's, there's potential glitches that things could happen. Another reason is for mobs, for mob spawning. And I'm going to cut to an, a creative world now where you can see this in action. 
So this is a creative world that I've been using to test uh, mob spawners and redstone and things like that. And as you can see from the floor, I've been mapping out where all of the chunks are. Now this orange line here, although it doesn't quite line up with my white lines, and that's because my white lines are slightly off, my chunk lines were off because I used a different method to find these. Um, but this orange line shows you exactly where you need to stand in order for mobs to spawn and the redstone to work in this mob spawner. So all this is, it's a, a series of platforms with dispensers in the middle and observers. And what happens is when it's turned on, as you can see, the water shoots up and it turns on and it pushes mobs off. Now this is out of sync because I've gone outside of the chunk boundaries while it was still working. But what it is, as you can see, the distance you are from redstone isn't relative to the number of blocks you are, it's relative to the number of chunks. So anywhere within this orange circle, this will work. So mobs will spawn and the redstone will activate. Anywhere outside of it, and it won't work. So if we're on a diagonal, and we go just outside of this here, that's gonna turn off. We won't see any redstone happening at all now, but if we just move slightly inside of it to there, then it should all start working again, as you can see there. So it's really important to know where your chunk boundaries are so that you know how far away you need to stand from these things to make them work so you can get the most out of it. Interestingly, however, it doesn't matter how far you are up above or below the chunks, in order for these things to work. So even if we're all the way at the world boundary at the top or the build limit, the redstone will still activate. And if this thing's built at the world limit and we're below it, it will still work. So it doesn't matter how high you are up, it will still work. It only matters on a distance across in either direction. So we're really high in the sky now, over 400 blocks, and you can see that redstone still activating. That water still came out from there. And if we wait a couple of seconds, that will turn off again and you'll see that in action. There we go, it's turning off now, so that little circle in the middle should clear. So it's really important if you're building a mob spawner or something like that, that you clear out or at least light up the entire area as high as you possibly can and as low as you possibly can in this area here in order to get the most out of it. And then if you stand underneath, just wait for the mobs to start falling down. So back in my survival world, in a world that has never had cheats enabled, as I will prove to you now, if I click that, it's gonna say, if you turn this on, you'll not get achievements anymore. So let's not do that. Let's see if this thing still works here. So I've got all the items I need. I'm gonna place them up here. I'm gonna put my repeaters down as I did before. One that way, one that way. A bit of redstone dust there, a bit of redstone dust there, and a block there. And let's just flick this lever on and off very quickly. And that will light will start flashing. So let's just go over in this direction until that light stops flashing. And I'll try my best to avoid the mobs that are spawning over here, as you would expect them to do in survival Minecraft. So let's hop over here. Hey, you, stop it. That's enough of that. Let's see, is it still flashing? No, so it's turned off from here. I don't know if you can just about work that, make that out on your screens but it has stopped flashing. So if we just go a little bit closer, there we go, it started flashing again now. You can just see to the side of this zombie that I'm gonna get rid of. Clear off zombie, I'm busy. There we go. And this is the point just here where it stops. So if I go onto this block there, it starts flashing again. So that is the first of the chunks within the area. Okay, so back in the creative world, I've set up some chunks as a bit of a test. So this green chunk in the middle is where we're gonna stand. If we are above that at any point, we can see that anything within these blue areas and the red one at the edge will work. So you can see just about from here, the redstone is flashing. When we go down, it'll work a bit more, but anything outside of that, the redstone won't work. So anything on the grass, the redstone's not gonna work, which means also if we plant any trees, they're not gonna grow. Mobs won't spawn outside of that. And yeah, and minecarts will despawn. So let's do a few tests. You can see in some of these blue patches, I've put uh, patches of dirt. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on um, spawning mobs. So let's turn mob spawning on. Now we should see that we won't get anything outside of our area now. It should all be within our little area. So if we just hover up a little bit further, we've got some slimes on here, but you won't get anything outside of the colored square chunks that we've put on here. And there we go. We've got a cow on that bit of grass over there that we just saw. And, and that's about it for now. And you can see from the redstone that all these little redstone lamp things are flashing, apart from that one over there, apart from that one there, and apart from that one there. So, oh, and that one over there. So all the ones on the grass aren't working. You can also see I've got a couple of zombies. 
set up in these little things there one there and one there and we can see them but the ones outside we can't see so if we go a little bit closer there we go we can see that zombie appears so he does exist we come back again he disappears i've also got a minecart track that goes off outside of the chunks with a little villager in it and he's going to help us test now if we follow him this time we'll see him go all the way around and come back and can you see because we come close to the edge now animals can now spawn on the spawn on the grass so he's going to go all the way around and he's come going to come back the other side and come back here but this is why it's important to know where your chunks are if we send him off and stay here you'll see that he's just going to disappear out of our render distance his minecart will stop now it won't be fully stopped it'll be in a sleep state so when we go closer to him again his minecart will start but it's not going to come back so if we've got a redstone circuit that's delivering items and it goes out of our visible area it's just going to back up and it could cause severe problems with items loaded too many of them but if we go closer to him he carries on so he'll come back again so you need to keep things with this in this area now what we're going to do now is we're going to try and plant a tree we're going to plant one in our little grassy area here and we're going to plant one over here in fact let's just plant a whole bunch of these all around this grassy area here and then let's let's plant a few inside of our little area in here and see if we can get these things to grow while we're in our little green square so i'm going to come back over here i'm going to put my view, field of view right down so we can see a bit closer there we go so it looks a little bit closer now even though we're right here which is a little bit odd but we should be able to see if i wait here long enough that our trees there in the center over there will grow but the, none of the ones around the outside will grow and that's the same for crops and plants and all those sorts of things cactuses and, and whatever you need isn't going to work outside of that area so it's a pretty big area but it's not massive it's not huge the other thing that's interesting to notice while we're waiting for these trees to grow is that mobs don't despawn in bedrock edition they disappear out of our view but they don't actually despawn they just go into some sort of sleep mode so we can see that that mob is there and that mob cage over there is empty but if we go back over this way into its viewing distance he comes back he hasn't despawned in java java edition as soon as we go 128 blocks away from a mob it completely despawns now it's more than 128 blocks from this mob to that mob so if this was java edition that one would definitely have despawned right now so i'm just going to go back quite a far way this way over here and then we're going to go right back over there to our center spot or just beyond our center spot and we'll see he'll still be there he hasn't gone anywhere he was just in sort of a sleep mode so mobs don't despawn in bedrock edition like they do in java edition now let's wait for these trees these trees are actually taking quite a long time to grow which isn't unusual for bedrock edition uh, but i'm just going to do another little test i'm going to add some more little patches in i'm going to add some more saplings in and see if it makes any difference how close they are to us as to where they'll grow so let's just chuck a few more like that in we'll put one there and we'll put one there and we'll put one there and this is so awkward to see in this field of view let's go back to our green square and let's see if any of these grow there we go one of the trees has grown right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to fly up in the air i've added this vi villager going around in a minecart and we're just going to watch what happens as we go up now because it doesn't matter how high you are it won't make a difference as to what's going on in this area things will still continue to grow mobs will continue to spawn and uh, redstone will continue to work as normal but the higher we go up you'll see immediately at about this high ish that zombie disappears so he's still there but he's disappeared from view so we are now 40 up so the ground is at level four so if we go up by 36 blocks the zombie in that chunk there will disappear see right the redstone still continues to flash we're going to go up a little bit higher and eventually you'll see the redstone repeaters disappear as well we've reached 130 there we go so the redstone blocks disappear around about 150 blocks from where we were so we've got that there and then they disappear the ones on the left hand side have because they're further away if we go up a little bit higher the ones in the red blocks will disappear as well so the blue the dark blue chunks which are slightly further away have already gone and the red chunks go slightly after so it does move in towards you as you go higher and higher up in the air but the redstone lamps are still flashing now if we keep going up higher and higher and higher and higher 
the redstone lamps will continue to flash because we're still activating those chunks, but more and more things will disappear from our view. So right up here, 400 blocks away, you can see those redstone lamps are still flashing away. So redstone is still working. We've lost a little bit of the minecart track. We've certainly lost the mobs. We've lost the villagers and we've lost the saplings as well. And as we fall back down to the ground, you'll see those things start to come in back again. The villagers should appear. There we go. That one below us has appeared there. And that one appears for half of that block there, 72 blocks away. So... It's interesting how it all works, but the main thing is, as long as you're pretty much four chunks away from anything, the redstone and growth and mobs and things will continue to spawn and work. However, it's not a perfect circle. Otherwise, we'd expect that one to work there and that one to work there, but they're not working. So it's an interesting shape. It's an interesting pattern what we've got, but this is how it all works. And this is why it's very important to know where your chunks are so you know exactly what's going on. We can build anything we want inside this area and as long as we're standing within this chunk, things will continue to grow and continue to work as we'd expect. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, do please leave a like on the video and if you haven't already, please do subscribe and I'll hopefully see you all in the next one. Bye! Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's another one you might like, and if you don't fancy that one, why don't you go to my channel page and see what else there is. There you can find all of my videos and playlists so you can watch a video whenever you want. And don't forget, you can also subscribe to get notified whenever I release a new video so you never miss out on anything.